Divine Truth Events. These are events and presentations by Jesus and Mary. This presentation is part of the Human Soul series. The topic is Fear is Your Friend. Presented by Jesus on the 23rd of August 2008 in Udlo, Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia. This is part two. One of the groups and asked me, she was feeling really, really tight in her tummy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And feeling a lot of feelings of uh, fear and stuff like that. And one of the things we talked about was how to breathe, in terms of how to breathe diaphragmatically and how to trigger that breathing within yourself. And I, and I showed her a little exercise that we're both going to demonstrate to you, but you've got to follow what we do. Okay. Is that all right? But it's going to mean standing up a little, standing up, and getting a bit of free space, enough free space to bend over. So, you can do that. Right, now what fear does, fear locks up this part of your body, your tummy, right? Diaphragm. So, what I'd like you to do is to breathe in, and as you're breathing in, go up like that, like up into the air, and then breathe out fully and bend right over and touch your toes if you can. Right? And then in again. And when you go out, don't hold it, just let it go. <laughs> just let your body go completely when you go down. <laughs> Who's feeling a bit funny with that? <laughs> Who's feeling a bit dizzy? <coughs> That's all, all I wanted to show you. <laughs> I went and saw a mind-body specialist and uh, he made me do that for 15 minutes. Wow. And uh, after 15 minutes I was a ball and mess on the floor. <laughs> and, I, and I stayed crying. That was the first time I ever cried in front of anybody in my whole life. And I was 34. And, uh, and yeah, it just, it just brought up all of this stuff, all of this emotion. My, you, you could feel how hard it was just to do it for 10 or 12 times, right? Yeah. And, and what it does is it gets all of... Your breath is the secret to accessing lots of things. When you breathe in that manner, it confronts a lot of fears. Because all of your fear locks up this portion of your body, right? And it purposefully does that so that you don't breathe freely. Because if you breathe freely, you will access fears. So you purposely close it down. And this is why, like, even people, you know, the military who train people to go to war, obviously they want you to shut down your emotions. Mm -hmm. And so they cause you to breathe in your chest rather than in your diaphragm down here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ever feel stuck emotionally, and you can feel that there's emotion there, if you breathe like that for ten minutes... I can pretty much guarantee you'll access the emotion. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a, I think there's a CD called Light Breath. Has anybody heard of that? Um, it's overseas quite a lot. Is that what it's called? Yeah. That, that was what Mike had. The heart, you've got a book in here mentioning the way of the heart, they do God's breath. Yeah, no, I'm talking, there's a, there's a CD that actually encourages you to breathe diaphragmatically. And, and every time you do it, and there's some people I know overseas that every time they do it, they generally always connect with an emotion that they're trying to express. What about rebirthing? Sorry? Rebirthing. Um, well, a lot of the rebirthing stuff is... A lot of the things that are offered to you nowadays are actually um, all techniques to help you connect with emotion. But if you set your intention to not actually connect with the emotion and just go through an experience, then in the end they won't help you very much. None of them will. 
So the key is whether you really want to set your intention to do with all of your emotion or not, right? as to whether anything will be affected. So I'm not decrying any method that helps you connect with your emotion. What I'm saying is that do you have an intention to connect to it before you begin it? Because if you yeah. don't and you just want to have some kind of quick fix, then in the end it's not going to benefit you much at all. Right? Soul stuff, soul work is permanent. Hey, Jason, include pranayama in that? What I include. You just said about the other methods. I include all methods in that. But if one sets one's intention yep. and does pranayama. What is. Can you explain what it is to the program? Well, I just know I practice it. I can't explain. It's a yoga. It's a yoga, it's a yoga method. Yoga oh, it's a yoga method. Yeah. I, I practice it regularly. <coughs> and, and are you clearing away all of your causal emotion? Um, I don't know. Well, you would certainly know. Well, it's happening. It's certainly happening. Yeah, so we'll have, with all of these methods, it will happen gradually, but unless you're willing to really confront the truth, in the end, all emotion stays locked down. Well, this isn't, since I've known you. It's, it's, uh, since I have known you yeah. and I've set forth the intention, yeah. Yeah. then it's different, isn't it? Oh. Totally different. Yeah. How many, since you've known me, you sort of regretted knowing me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Is it always necessary to know exactly what the emotion is? Like no. Sort of breathing off and brings up emotion, but I can't always connect with exactly what that emotion is. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what emotion the emotion is, just that you experience it. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times we do need to connect to what it is to experience it, because uh, you know, we have our mind at work trying to tell us that I can't feel this until I know what it's about. But in reality, a lot of your emotional experiences you will actually feel and not even know what they were because they were created in you before you had a conscious memory. So while you're in the womb and things like that. So using music and things like that to help you release emotions? That Use you don't anything. Necessarily name is to yeah. Use anything. Get get at the when you get at the causes of the emotions, that's when your life changes. So remember in that, my discussion with Carol just earlier, when she was feared, she said she felt this and she felt those things, and I said they're all effects. The problem is many of our feelings is where all we're doing often is feeling effects. Mm -hmm. And we're not actually digging deeper and allowing ourselves to feel the cause. Just the effects hurt enough, don't they? Mm -hmm. And so we tell ourselves, wow, that hurt a lot. I hope I'm over that now. <laughs> right? And lo and behold, we've probably only just begun. Like, I've found that with a lot of my emotions where I've had some really big releases and then, then found like months later that I've really only just begun it rather than actually felt the full effect of it. And your, your soul's not capable at the moment in its current condition of experiencing all of your emotions without self-harm. So, so you've got to trust that whatever the law of attraction is bringing you right now, that's what you need to deal with right now. Right? And you, your, your soul's ready for what's right now, all the time. Would you say that sometimes we get caught up in trying to fix a, an emotion rather than just experience emotion to let go? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. In almost all of the discussions we have this afternoon with different ones who are brave enough to come and sit in the hot seat next to me, <laughs> um, you'll find that almost every one and, and this is saying it without even knowing which one of you, which ones of you want to come up. Um, almost every one of you will be actually intellectualising yourself away from your emotions. Right? And it's very, very difficult to not do that initially. Because we're so used to responding in fear. We're so used to trying to even just tell us... Like, how many of you want to tell yourself you're doing better this week than last week? Right? Why do you want to tell yourself that? Because that's another emotion. You follow me? It's an emotion of wanting to compare yourself this week with last week. Why would you want to compare yourself this week with last week? So that you feel you're improving. So what do you really feel inside? 
I'm not really improving. <laughs> and I need to feel that emotion. Does that make sense? So almost every action that we take, every single day and every single week that we take, is all about trying to avoid another emotion that's there. Hey, Jay. Sometimes I had to put a lid on my emotions because I can't stop and I've got to maintain an income. <laughs> What's AJ going to say about that? <laughs> Don't shut down your emotion. The reason why is because every time you shut it down, you have closed down yourself. You've actually demonstrated not love to yourself, but rather fear about what's going on. So it's no longer love as soon as you shut down an emotion. And also what you're also doing is harming everything around you and putting another blockage there for you to access that emotion again. Why not just feel it right now? See, what we've got to get to do, and I know it's hard when you're the first ones doing it, but what we've got to do in the end is become the leaders of people processing their emotion no matter what is happening around us. And in the end, the whole world is going to be processing emotion. Won't that be fantastic? <laughs> so instead of, instead of them all going to war, they're all going to sit at home and process their fear. And process. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Okay. And that's going to happen. That is going to happen that way. Right? But it needs people to start it. And the people who are attracted to it right now are... Yeah. <laughs> right? So obviously you at some level want to start this, right? Otherwise you wouldn't be here. You again. I've been doing this for about seven, seven or more years. Mm -hmm. I get to the stage where I have to put a lid on it because I get so sick from not eating. I can't eat. So then I have to moody food up for days and days and days until I go and seek something else to get me out of it. Well, what, what's happening is you're not dealing with the cause. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with an effect. Mm -hmm. right? When you deal with causes, what happens is, you, after you've had a release, you'll feel a sense of peace enter you, which is the peace that comes through God's love. Right? Mm -hmm. You'll feel this peace enter you. If peace is not entering you after you've felt, dealt with an emotion, there's only two possible answers. One is that you've not felt the emotion to its cause. And the second is that you're just feeling the effects. All right? Many of the times all we do is cry about or do or grieve about effects. And that is not going to help. There is also two <coughs> processes that are involved. One is releasing the error. Do you understand? Releasing the error means feeling the emotion of the error and actually experiencing the emotion of the error. But the other side of the coin is we also need to come to accept the truth. This is why I've got the truth discussion tomorrow, right? Because we can go ahead and just release errors, but in the end, what are we left with? Nothing. Nothing. Right? But if we want to be at one with God, we are going to need to actually become at one with divine truth. So we're going to need to emotionally experience God's truth as well. And quite often you will cry over and over about something from your childhood, because you're refusing to accept the truth. Now, can I just use your example, Carol, just earlier? When, when Carol came up, um, she was feeling all of these things about if she doesn't do this and she doesn't do that, then you know, her life was going to get worse and worse and worse, and she wanted to, to you know, still continue this over-nurturing to solve the problem, basically. The over-nurturing is causing the problem. It's never going to be the solution of the problem. Now, there's the error that she doesn't want to feel. The error is going back into the childhood experiences and feeling like she has to earn love. That's the error. That needs to be released. The reason why she's over-nurturing. But there is also the flip side. And that is, what is the truth? The truth is that she is loved and even if there's no one on earth who loves her, God loves her and her spirit friends love her. Right? And she can't feel that love. Right? That's the other side of the truth. And that's not being accepted at the moment. How can you accept that when you've got the error? So can you see it's a sort of like a two-stage process? 
Release the error, accept the truth. Release more error, accept more truth. Release more error, accept more truth. Eventually you'll have released all error, and that point is the transition between the seventh and the eighth spheres from a spiritual perspective. Once you've released all error, you are now going to just be assimilating more truth. And each truth that hits you is just going to be enjoyable. It's never going to have a sad or you know those kind of terrible or grieving emotions associated with it. In the end, all of your existence after that point is about your desire for truth. You follow me? Yeah. Yeah. The error part's finished and forgotten. Right? It's just right now, right when we're in a state of error, that it's the most difficult time for us. Because we're not only having to just accept truth, we have to first let go of the error as well. And we need to accept truth when we're, you know, letting go of error and we've still got error within us. And so, so there's this process that happens where we're accepting, gradually <coughs> accepting more truth, gradually accepting more truth. Because the error that's still within us prevents us from fully accepting all of the divine truth. But you'll get to a point in your progression where there's only truth left in you. No error to release. There's only love in you. And once you're in that point, from then on, your progression continues infinitely in truth. And that's one of the things we'll talk about tomorrow. Right. So let's get back to the fear discussion. I wanted to go through some practical ways, but firstly, firstly I just wanted to state some things about fear. Can you see fear is the opposite end to truth? Pain is the opposite end to pleasure. So if I'm not feeling pleasure, the answer is, let myself feel my pain and eventually I'll get to pleasure. If I'm not feeling truth, the answer is, let myself feel all my false, my false beliefs appearing true and I'll eventually get to truth. Can you see that? Yeah. So, in a way, fear is your pathway home. Anything you fear is something you need to go to. So, if I'm afraid of, let's, let's put it in a physical sense, if I'm afraid of spiders, how am I going to address that truth? The truth is, I've got nothing to be afraid of from God's perspective. God created all creatures in harmony. Right? So that's the truth. So if I'm afraid of a spider, then I'm in a state of fear, which is not harmony with truth. How am I going to confront that? Face it. How do I face it? Feel it. So how do I feel it? Well, one, yeah, when you think about it, one of the easiest ways is to put a spider on your hand and let all of it come up. Isn't it? Right? And as it comes up, breathe and continue to breathe and let yourself experience it. And if you go into a state of terror, let yourself breathe through that. Just keep continue doing that. One of the, how else are you going to do it? With snake, I did it with snake. Yeah. You know, there might be other ways you could do it, but that is one way you could easily do it. And there's this common belief today that, you know, we have to all go to somebody who's a specialist to actually deal with whatever it is that we're trying to deal with. God made you perfect being. God made you that you can deal with every single thing that's within you. Like, do you think God worries about a person's, you know, piece of paper and what's written on it as to, like, of course, of course he doesn't, right? So, so, you know, even the persons who are the poorest persons on earth can accept divine truth, right? And your life will change. Anything that's, you know, taking money from you, whether it be pills, potions, lotions, um, <laughs> you know, or, or a therapist or whatever, if you have them available to you, use them to access your emotions. But... Be aware that everything is around you already to confront all of these emotions. The law of attraction is happening perfectly in your life right now to confront all of your emotions. You're just ignoring it in many cases. Right, right now everything is happening perfectly. AJ, when you said to actually feel the fear, again, how do you know if you're sitting in the causal or if you're sitting in the effect? Um, when, you, when you've dealt with causal emotion, you will always afterwards feel a feeling of peace and calm. When you deal with effects, you will find that you will become exhausted, but not feel feelings of peace and calm, and next day it will be the same, and next day it will be the same. Right? If it changes, 
then you're probably dealing with causes. If it's not changing and every day feels the same, then it's probably effects. So the, the first point is just to feel. Just to feel. Always just feel. Whether it's cause or effect, don't worry about that. Feel, firstly. Learn how to feel, firstly. But then understand that if I'm crying about the same thing every single day and every single day, is nothing is changing. It's, it's due to one of two reasons. One is that I'm not releasing the error fully, or two, I'm not accepting the truth fully. It's one of those two things. Right? Yeah, the new truth, yeah. So, for example, a, a woman who's being beaten by her husband can leave him, right? And her life will change by leaving him. But has she accepted the truth emotionally yet? That she's lovable? Probably not, right? And that the law of attraction will soon demonstrate that to her by attracting another man who's, you know, maybe not abusive this time, but who's verbally abusive. Right? So she's grown a bit. She's let go of a little, a little bit of the cause. Remember one the discussion I had with one lady in Dallas, and her, her history with men has been the first one beat her, the second one verbally abused her, the third one gave her the silent treatment. <laughs> and now she was, you know, not wanting to have a fourth one because she was worried about what was going on with her life. So what was happening was that she has been growing and releasing emotion, right, just through the law of attraction, but, but still not fully accepting the, the, the truths that she needed to accept. If you, you can accept the truths completely and your life will change absolutely completely. So look at how the law of attraction is bringing things to you as well. If the law of attraction is still telling you things, then obviously it means it's not dealt with. Who came up to me at the break and asked about it back? Me. It was yourself, wasn't it? So you were saying, oh, I've dealt with that, but, but the lower back pain is saying, no, you have not dealt with that. Right. Right? So quite often that's happening with our, in our lives. Right? We're saying to ourselves, I've dealt with that, I've dealt with this, I've dealt with that. But the law of attraction doesn't apply to you. Right? God's laws are perfect. <laughs> Completely perfect. Alright? Alright, All right, let's look at it. So, fear leads me to truth. Can you see why I must learn to love my fear? My fear is my pathway back to truth. You see that? Like, every single thing I'm afraid of is actually what I need to learn. So, something in there every single time. Every single thing I'm afraid of. But what we often do is we live in this fear. So what happens is we, we, in this state of fear, we get into this panic and we live in the panic. We actually make decisions based around the panic, nursing the panic, cotton wooling the panic, making sure that everything in our lives conforms so that we don't feel that panic, right? And that is not leading us back to truth then. All we're doing is we're staying locked up in a state that is never ever going to change until we confront it and see the truth. And that is that if we feel the fear and go what's underneath it and feel the emotions underneath it, it will lead us back home. So I think of truth, like divine truth is my home. Right? That's where I want to live. Right? There's two truths. There's that truth, which is the truth of your pain, but then there's also the God's perspective of that truth. I'm only talking about God's perspective of the truth. Okay. Yeah. And that is going to firstly require your personal truth. And we'll talk tomorrow about the difference between personal truth and God's truth. Right? But in, when I'm talking about this truth, I'm talking about God's truth. Okay. All, right? All fear, everything, is a result of me not accepting God's truth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not my own truth. But accepting my own truth is a part of the process. But understand, all of us here are in a state of error, are, are we not? Right? Do you know everything about that God knows? Obviously not, I don't. So then I'm in a state of error at some point, aren't I? So well, how do we get from this place to that place? By firstly confronting my own errors, and then also coming to accept God's truths. That's the only way that we can get home. So the other thing about fear, the other things about fear is that when you work through this, this what we see as a problem, but is actually our friend, right? Once we work through these feelings from our friend, we will learn some some qualities that are very, very important in our progression. One of them is courage. Right? Most of us 
have a tendency to avoid situations where courage is required emotionally. So I'm not talking about physical courage, although that's part of it. I'm talking about having the courage to experience and know everything inside of you. Having the courage to face that. That's what God is going to require of you, in fact. He's going to require that of you. Right? The other thing that it builds is this quality called faith. Faith is seeing things in the future right, that nobody else can really see. Now, the Apostle Paul said uh, it's the assured expectation of the things hoped for. What that means is that I, can, I, I hope for things in the future and I know for certain in my heart that I'm going to realise them. Now, the reason why that's a very important quality in dealing with your fear is that when we're in this state of fear and living in this state of fear, we do not see anything outside that fear generally. We don't see the bliss that we could be living in. right? We don't see how beautiful our life could be. And it's only by having faith or building faith that we begin to see how beautiful our life can be. And faith is a necessary requirement of you dealing with your emotions because there are some times when you're dealing with your emotions that you're going to feel so bad and you're going to feel so alone and so distraught and so hopeless that it's only your faith that is going to keep you emotionally processing Nobody inside of you will keep you doing it. It will only be your faith, whatever it has. And so facing fears and embrace, learning to embrace them actually builds that quality of faith. And there will be a time where faith turns into reality when you do that. So when you make the transition between the seventh and the eighth sphere, you will no longer have an assured expectation of things hoped for. You will at that time know for certain because you've experienced it. You follow me? So right at the moment, everything I'm saying to you, many of you are going, hmm, that's interesting, hmm, that's interesting. Well, that's not so interesting, well, I don't like that. But, you know, you're having this decision-making process going through your mind, right? And you're wanting to put some of those things into actions. There will come a time when you look back on all of this and you'll see the full truth of it and you'll know it in your heart because you've personally experienced it. That's when faith turns into reality for you. That's when the truth has become real. And it's your fear that is your friend leading you back to that place. Because everything you fear right now is, in fact, there is, in fact, a truth associated with it that you're not accepting right now. That make sense to everyone? Yeah. yeah. All right. And who'd like to come up next time? <laughs> you can't do that, Rachel. Rachel's mum can come up. Is that all right? Now, in all of these sessions, please bear in mind that what I'm saying to you is... And, and you'll feel confronted at times by what I'm saying, right? And, and I'm not saying these things to make fun or anything like that. I'm saying these things to actually confront the truths right, of what's going on. So, thank you. what was your name? Karen. Karen, can you tell me a bit about, like, obviously you had a feeling of why you wanted to come up, so let's talk about that. Um, right now I'm feeling... Friendly and anxious. Um, I wanted to come up because I sense that you've been avoiding me, and I thought if I come up here, you can't avoid me. And <laughs> 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 um, so let's go into this emotionally. Let's go into that emotionally. Why would I want to avoid you? Yeah. Um, I'm confused. Can you speak up? She doesn't know why, she, why I want to avoid it. I'll, I'll try and speak up. I, the, I suppose the first question is, do I want to avoid it? <laughs> and I don't want to avoid anybody. And I have no feeling of wanting to avoid you. 
So if I'm fi if you're feeling a feeling that I'm trying to avoid you, what's that? What's going on there? Are you asking me or are you asking me? I'm asking you first. Um, I'm learning to everything and everything happens at my mind level and it's done all my life. But yep. I'm learning to um, put a lot of weight on how I feel Good. and what my gut is telling me. Good. And I don't know why, but my gut is telling me this man is not wanting me around him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you ladies have felt that today? Yeah, Quite a few, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm avoiding a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, it's your emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now there's a need that you have yeah. right? that's not being that's not being felt. Yeah. Right? And this is what we often do with our emotions: is we we think the other person feels a certain way about us, not understanding that it's actually we are feeling that way about us. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? So let's now change so what you just said. <laughs> you feel I don't want to be around you. That's what you were feeling. Right? You were feeling that I was avoiding you. Right? But the truth is actually there's a need within you because there's this feeling inside of you that you want to avoid yourself. And you want somebody else to take notice of you so that you don't have to feel that feeling. So the addiction is, I want somebody else to notice me and that way I feel validated. Does that make sense? Everything makes sense intellectually. Um... Alright, so let's now make the step emotionally. I'm going to do exactly the opposite now, as explained to you what's actually here. So what I've just said is I'm not avoiding you. And by the way, I'm not avoiding any of those of you <coughs> who are projecting needy emotions at me. <laughs> <laughs> but I am responding to your soul. So if you project a needy emotion at me, I am going to create a new situation with you where that needy emotion is triggered. Do you understand that? Yes. Like, so what I feel from you is what, like, uh, how can I explain this? It's very difficult to explain intellectually. <laughs> no, no, I, I want to keep you here because I want to help you go into the emotion. But I'll just explain how everything works from my perspective. What I, from my perspective, I'm feeling your emotion, not what you think you're saying or what you are actually saying. I'm actually feeling what you're feeling. Do you follow me? Yeah. Now when I feel what you feel, I then respond to that feeling in the most loving way that I'm capable of doing with my current development. So if you're projecting a needy feeling at me, the most loving thing for me to do would be to help you feel the reason why you feel needy. Mm -hmm. And that means probably that the most loving thing for me to do would be to avoid you. Right? Now, I don't even think of that. I don't, that never crosses my mind. It's just what automatically happens when I'm around a needy person, I avoid them. And I don't know why, it just happens automatically. Do you follow me? <laughs> and it happens automatically because of the feeling inside of me that I want to respond in love to every single person. And this is what will happen with you as you progress as well. You will respond in love to every single person. So what I'm going to do is avoid you completely from now on. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I know why you're doing it, I'm right with that. <laughs> Turn straight away into yeah. an intellectual argument, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've done it in my life. <laughs> now, now, take a lot of care of doing that because what you're doing is avoiding your emotion in that instance. What you need to do instead is, I, AJ just doesn't want to spend any time with me at all. I'm unworthy of his attention. I'm unworthy of everyone's attention now that I feel about it. And go into that. And just let yourself go into that emotion. So the gut feeling is the one you need to follow to access the emotion. Me. The gut feeling that you were having was, AJ's avoiding me. 
don't worry about discussing it with AJ. Sit down. AJ's avoiding me. AJ's avoiding me. Why? You know, how do I feel when AJ's avoiding me? You know, I feel unworthy. I feel, and go deep into that. Go into that emotion. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because what's happening at the moment is we skip over these emotions by saying, oh, maybe he's not avoiding me, or, yeah, no, I feel he is avoiding me, but, you know, maybe he's got his reasons, or whatever, right? But we don't go into the actual emotion. So, so if you feel, I'm avoiding you, sit down, let yourself feel that emotion, because the emotion is a feeling that you have with me of unworthiness. Right? And you need to let yourself go into that emotion. Let that emotion be triggered. And then your fruit salad will come. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I missed out on the fruit salad? <laughs> <laughs> Everything will flow then, right? Once you do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Now, at the moment, what's happening inside of yourself is there's very, very strong fears about feeling those really deep core emotions of unworthiness. Right? And that's why you've gone so much into your mind over your life. Are you asking me something or telling me something? You say whatever you like. Would you like to say something? Well, I accepted that that's what was happening not that long ago. Mm -hmm. And I came out of a difficult experience where I felt and I continue to feel that... I am very worthy. Um, I felt very grateful for having gone through that because I came out feeling that I had value and um, feeling I had worth. And when you say to me now what you say, I say, look, the reason, if he only knew that I'm a child of God and I am a cherished child of God, he would treat me a lot better than he is. <laughs> I don't know where to go. You but, know? but can you see that how you feel about just saying that to me? A little bit angry, you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I, I acknowledge that there was a lot of once I realised. See, what's happening is that you you say you resolved that issue, yeah. but the truth is that you haven't. Mm -hmm. And I, I can hear you saying that, but in myself, I think I don't feel unworthy. But if, if you felt you were a cherished child of God, you would know exactly what my emotion is, that I haven't been trying to avoid you. So, I, I say, you're probably saying, what you're saying, I accept that you must be right, because you better uh, 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 Stop, stop, stop. I don't want you to go there. It's too many of you do this with me. I, I, I'm tired of you saying you must be right. Do you understand? Like, you need to trust your emotion. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Whether I'm right or wrong is immaterial, really. Yeah. Right? Don't go there with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so, so none of this I must be right. right. What, are, what are your feelings? Take it back. If you're saying that I have to go into our emotion and trust my emotion, mm -hmm. I guess the difficulty I'm having is I'm saying my gut feeling is telling me I am I have value. But you're saying my emotion is telling me something different and I'm confused. Well, okay. You're saying you have value. But on the same and the same thing, you're saying, why doesn't AJ notice me? Yeah, and I hear you saying that. So how do I work out to go? I'm learning now to go by my gut feeling, but okay. you're telling me some more information well, you, now, well, which makes me wonder if I should go by my gut feeling. Well, your gut feeling at the moment is, why doesn't AJ notice me? AJ does not notice me. But my gut gut feeling is I have value. That's what you're saying to yourself. Mm. That's what, that's what I feel. Well, how can you be feeling that when you're attracting another situation that's telling you the total opposite? How can I be attracting another situation when I feel that? Well, well that's what I'm saying. You're not, it's not real. <laughs> you see, you see... But you're saying that I shouldn't say that you know best because... And I'm saying that, okay, if I'm, if I'm to follow my own internal voices... Mm -hmm. Well, let's, I want to follow your internal voices. Right. Let's follow your internal voices. Your internal voice is, the first one you started with, is AJ is, not, doesn't, is avoiding me. Yeah. Why would you have a need for me to not avoid you? Or a need to me to avoid you? It doesn't really matter which one. 
why would you even, if you had a sense of self-worth, would you have a need for me to do anything? No, but there were certain, there were certain behaviours that I perceived mm -hmm. that um, I interpreted as your wanting to create or maintain some distance. Certainly. And it was a needy projection coming from self. Yeah, we're going around in circles a bit, aren't we? Exactly. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, I, can everyone see for a moment? Yeah. Oh, just, uh, yeah. Yeah. When, when I... The emotion of need. Yeah. Very important for you to understand what's going on under any need. If you have a need outside of yourself for anything from anyone and you feel hurt inside of yourself when you don't get that need met, it means that there's something unresolved within yourself. Right? So, if I have a need for you to notice me, and you don't notice me, and I'm saying, hang on a sec, I'm worth being noticed. I'm worth being noticed. You know, I'm a child of God. Doesn't he realise that? What's wrong? What's wrong with this stupid man? Right? Now, if I go into that, I will realise actually that I actually don't feel as strongly. I, that's what I want to feel. I want to feel that I actually am a child of God and that I am worthy. But obviously, if I'm having that emotion of anger come up and those kind of things come up, then obviously I'm not feeling that. And I'm needing AJ, in this case, to validate that feeling in me. Do you follow me? So what you're wanting is for me to validate your worthiness. But if you really felt worthy in your heart, would you need my validation? No. So what's the next step? So the next step is just to go into the emotion. AJ avoided me. Like, he must think I'm terrible. He's avoiding me, he's trying to stay away from me, what's wrong? Go into that emotion even deeper and say, all right, now I'm getting angry. Well, obviously I'm getting angry, I'm covering over something inside of myself, right? So let's go deeper into that. I feel avoided. Right? I feel like I'm not treated like I'm worthy, you know, and go into that. And let yourself cry about it, because you're upset about it. Because you wouldn't feel a projection, you wouldn't want to project anger at me if you weren't. Do you follow me? You're avoiding the sadness and grief about that, which means that that emotion is not healed yet. So while at the moment you certainly have more self-worth than you used to have, there is still more work to be done in that emotion before you will feel that completely. Yeah, I think um, I continue to have uh, a problem with you saying things like that. You say I've cried about it um, because. Like I said, I've been doing things intellectually for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I can easily say to myself, cry about it. But, but it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Okay. The reason why it's not happening is because of the fears you have about it. The fears you have about experiencing the emotion. So what I'd like to do now, perhaps, is we go through some practical things you can do to, to actually start breaking down those fears. So what's actually happening is you've got this emotion in there, right? And then you've got covers over the top of it, which is like a layer of hardness over the top. So here's the emotion here, right? And you've got this layer of hardness over the top. And they are your fears suppressing the emotion. They are your blocks, if you like. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Often the hardest thing is to experience the blocks, not the emotions. Right? I've found that very hard in my own life, in my own progression, is that oftentimes getting, once I'm in the emotion, I'm great, you know, can handle that. I can handle eight weeks of balling if that's what it takes, right? But getting to that place, I've found very frustrating. And everybody pretty much feels the same, right? And the reason why it's a frustrating process is because we have all these blockages that we also need to identify if we're going to know ourselves. And so what I'd like to do maybe is talk to, a little bit, talk to you a little bit about how to identify a blockage. Yes. Alright? So that, that's going to be good. Now, now, one thing I'd like to point out to you is there are about 12 people who put up their hands 
to come up the front. And I chose you. Oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I've been waving my hand for a long time. But it wasn't because Rachel was pointing. So can you see how your belief is affecting this? Like, you want to believe that, but that's not how I'm feeling. Yeah, all of what you say makes sense. Yeah. yeah, but it's not affecting your heart. And we'll yeah. talk about how to make it. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that fellow in the Wizard of Oz. Because at the moment, <laughs> Karen, you still feel that I want to avoid you. And what I'm saying to you is that feeling will not leave you until you experience it. You follow me? So yeah. what you will need to do is actually go into that feeling now. So when you go home tonight, go into that feeling. Yeah, I don't believe this AJ guy, you know. You know, really he was avoiding me. Go into that. And let yourself you know, how do you feel being avoided by me? Go into that. And let yourself let yourself connect to that. And we'll talk about how to break down some of the fears that are capping that uh, as well. But let yourself actually dig into that emotion. I keep saying I, I can do this intellectually, but what I want to learn to do is how to do it True. Emotionally. The truth is you can't do any of this intellectually. You, we, and that's something I'd like to point out to all of you. A lot of this comes as words at you, right? Mm -hmm. But until you experience it, you're not going to know what I'm talking about at all. Mm -hmm. right? The first time you start experiencing it, then you'll know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's when it will change. And it's okay to be like that, because that's what part of the awakening of the soul is all about. Deconstructing all of this intellectual stuff that filled us. And, you know, this damage was done to us when we were children. So the key is to not go then and blame yourself and say, you know, why not I was stupid, I'm just not getting this and all that kind of stuff. Well, you can go down that track if you want. That's just an emotion too, right? But, but in the end, it's not... The, the reality is that when you experience it for the first time, you'll have an your soul awakens and you'll start realising what it means to get something emotionally rather than intellectually. Uh, at the moment, many of you love what you're hearing, but you're not getting it at the soul level. The reason why you love what you're hearing is because it appeals to your soul. There's an attractiveness of the message of truth to your soul, but you're not getting it in your heart, you are only hearing it at the moment. And hearing it causes an awakening, but once you have the awakening, you'll feel quite differently about it. Yeah. Okay, just it's on also just noticing that Carol said that she had thought she'd dealt with it, and then and obviously still needs to. So is there parts of the same thing, like there's that core, but there's lots of other bits on the top in that in those the hard bits, the fears. Yeah, m most that, often when people say to me they've dealt with it. I find that they've almost barely scratched the surface yeah. of it. So we could go through something lots and lots of times? Um, not, no, 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 no. Okay. It's not about the amount of times you do it, and it's not about how long it's taking you. It's about the depth you're willing to go to. Everyone understands the difference? Right? You can allow yourself to feel the completeness of an emotion within one sitting. Right? Right? and the next day be totally over it for good. Right? But that's not what happens in the majority of cases because we have so many fears and resistances to that. Right? But what happens a lot of times, people have done a lot of work on their stuff, intellectually or emotionally, and even sometimes emotionally, but barely scratch the surface. Like uh, somebody said to me the other day, they went to a, a session uh, with a, uh, a therapist, did an hour and a half of crying. Wasn't it great to have that release? And at that same moment, the exact same emotion that was in them, I felt they had like another like 10 bucket loads of it empty, right? And they've just emptied one bucket. Yeah. But they were telling themselves now that they've emptied the 10. They don't need to touch that again. If you do that, you just set up another resistance to your emotion. So what I've found I've had to do is just be completely humble and understand that every single release that I've had doesn't mean I've released it all until my law of attraction changes, right? Until I have that feeling of peace and love coming from God, 
entering my soul, I have not completely dealt with that emotion. Yeah. So when, when you completely deal with this emotion, you will feel divine love entering you. And not only that, you will, no matter what happens around you and in interaction with any person, you will never feel like they're avoiding you. So like, I, I now, I'm in the state now where I can feel lots of different emotions coming from everyone here in the room, but I don't feel like anyone, like, I don't feel hurt at anyone trying to avoid me. And quite a number of you are avoiding, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> For lots of different reasons. So once you've sorted out one thing, And what I've found, the question was, once you've sorted out one thing, do you go on to the next 55 different things that are out there? What I've found is that the law of attraction is bringing to you the thing you're ready to deal with and, and are wanting to do with right now. So right today, the law of attraction is bringing you this situation where you're feeling like AJ doesn't want to be with you and, and therefore doesn't think you're worthy of, being, of, of, of his attention. And that's the emotion you're ready to deal with right now. And tomorrow there might be something different and the next day it might be back to this one. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. And oftentimes if we deal with the causal, it will never come back. So if we deal with the complete cause, it will never come back. But, but with unworthiness, by the way, unworthiness is one of the major deep emotions that mankind has. It is not ever going to be dealt with in one sitting. Trust me. None of you will ever deal with this emotion in one sitting of unworthiness. Right? It, it will take, well, it doesn't have to take years either, particularly with the divine, on the divine path. But it does take a, a feeling of, I want to fully choose to experience it. Right? So maybe I'll give some examples of that, uh, of my own life, you know, so you can relate to that. Thanks, Karen. Thanks for being honest. Too. Um, so, just uh, one thing I wanted to mention, some, uh, some practical things that Karen <laughs> up. What, what I suggest to most people if they're not feeling their emotions, so, if you feel blocked up emotionally, so who's feeling blocked up emotionally? You can feel something's in there, it's just, it's just not coming out, right? <laughs> Um, start constructing a sincere fear list. When I say sincere, most people when they first do it are very insincere. And I asked, I asked a lady, I asked a lady in Dallas to do this, and, and she came up with seven things she was afraid of. Right? And then we sat down and had a conversation with another lady who'd done it, who'd come up with about 35 different things she was afraid of. And the first lady said, "Oh." I think I have all of those as well. <laughs> right? And that's often the case, right? It's only when we start discussing what we're really afraid of. So I'd encourage all of you even to discuss with each other, right? When you get the opportunity. What are you really afraid of? And go into all sorts of areas of your life. So let's look at the area of a relationship. What are you afraid of in a relationship? My husband leaving me. My husband cheating on me. And off we go. Just write them all down, right? Write them all down because they all hide an emotion you're yet to release. You follow me? And then go into your relationship with your children. What are you afraid of there? I'm a bad mother. I, you know, I, what damage have I done to them that is going to, you know, all those going to... Write all those down. All of them hide an emotion you're yet to release. And then go into your work situation. What are you afraid of there? Write them all down, all the fears, and they all hide an emotion you're unwilling to release. Yeah. It's a job, isn't it? Sorry. It's a lifetime job. Well, it may appear to be, right? But I've found, um, like, I've been doing it for a lot of years. I've, like, I've got two thousand years of experiences to to work my way through, right, in terms of memories, and and so you know, obviously, that's a fair bit to work through, but I feel right now that I'm right near the end of that. 
because I can feel in myself that the biggest issue that's left now, all the other issues that I've dealt with, and I dealt with the second biggest issue a few days ago, and now I'm on this biggest issue, which is my relationship with God, and, and all of these feelings evolved with my own feelings of unworthiness with God and so forth. So, so I know now that I'm near the end of it, and you will feel that in yourself as well. Right? You will feel as you work through it, but you will need to be sincere. In the first century I said, you've got to seek, keep on knocking, keep on asking, and it will be given to you. If you don't want to seek truth in your life, which means also seeking all of your personal truth in your life, it's not going to be given to you. One of the attitudes that, uh, that one of the laws of the universe is the law of desire. Do you really have a desire to feel everything within yourself? At some point, you're going to need to be truthful about that. Right? And say, oh, I don't. If you don't. Right now, am I experiencing the emotion that's blocked? Who's blocked again? Who said they were blocked? Right. All of us who are blocked are not feeling our emotion or uh, the emotion underneath that, right? And we're choosing to not do that. Are you allowed to choose to not do that? Yes. 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 I'm allowed to not feel. <laughs> you're allowed to say that to yourself. I'm allowed to not feel. Because you've got free will. Ironically, I've seen many people on a bodywork table being told they're allowed to not feel it. So, for example, some people have been saying, I really want to get to this sadness. I really want to get to this sadness. And I just say to them, you're allowed to not feel sadness. And all of a sudden they're crying. <laughs> because the block was that they weren't allowed. Yeah. What's the childhood blocks in many cases are all these constructions that your parents have created. So your fear list accesses all of your emotional blockages, right? That's what a fear list does. It's telling you the things that you're avoiding and in many cases will also expose the blocks that you have to avoiding them. So for example, um, Earlier, Carol, we were talking about your emotions, right? <coughs> about going into the emotion of feeling like over-nurturing others and then going into that emotion of feeling like you've got to earn love. And one of the first things you stated at the time was, but if I do that, like, if I, how long will that take? Because I haven't got, you know, I haven't got, you know, all this time because, I, you know, my, my business will, well, my place will fold. You know, I'll lose my property, all these other things might happen to me. So, so what's the block? I've got time constraint. That's a block. I've, I'm going to give myself a slice and that's enough. How many times did that happen when you were little? How many times did your mother or father say, if that's enough now, you've cried long enough? Right? You want to cry more, you go outside or to your room or something. How many times has that said to you? That's a block. And if you have a close look at everything your parents do to block their own emotions, there's a pretty good chance that that's what they taught you to do. Quite often we can see it in others, right? But not often in ourselves. So a fear list. The other thing with a fear list that's very good is often what I do is I compare how God would feel and how I feel. Now when I say how God would feel, compare how God would feel... Just imagine yourself for a moment to be at one with God and you don't have any fears at all and all you have is love and all you're in is truth. Would you feel that particular thing that you're feeling? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So let's say, let's say the feeling that I have is I'm afraid, the fear is, I'm afraid to get up and speak in front of a group. Who's afraid to speak in front of groups? <coughs> all right. All right. So that's the fear. If you're at one with God, would you be afraid to get up and speak in front of a group? wouldn't make any difference to you, would it? Right? So straight away I know the fear is covering an emotion that's an error. You follow me? Yeah. Okay. So what do I do to confront that emotion? Well, I could choose to speak in front of the group. Right? Confront the fear head on. Speak in front of the group, see what emotions come up. You can also imagine yourself doing it. Exactly. I could imagine myself speaking in front of a group or... Even better still, imagine myself in times when I was young, when I spoke in front of a group, where I got whatever happened to me. Because right? that's where everything is linked, isn't it? 
when you're in a group or you're embarrassed in front of a group. What, every, imagine every time, if you can remember back any time in your life when your parents embarrassed you in a group. Right? Feel those times. Right? And all of a sudden when you feel those causal emotions, you'd be able to get in front of a group and you won't feel anything different than speaking one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Right. right, so I've said a few more practical things in the practical thing list. <laughs> oh yeah, identifying ways that you express your fear. When I am afraid, what do I do? When I'm afraid, I... What do you do when you're afraid? Get angry. Get angry? Okay, so every time I'm angry, it means I'm afraid. Every time I'm angry, just remind myself. Every time I'm angry, I'm afraid. Another fear list to go down. So, let's say, uh, okay... And I just hear that somebody told me a lie and uh, I'm really angry. So what's that telling me? I'm afraid. Uh, I'm getting angry because I'm afraid. Why, why am I angry because they told me a lie? I'm afraid because they told me a lie. Why am I afraid? It's covering an emotion inside of me. What's the emotion you feel when somebody lies? Betrayal. Betrayal. And you don't want to feel that feeling and so you get angry instead. You follow me? What's another emotion you might feel? Fear for your own life. You know, that you're being misrepresented. Fear, you know, there could be lots of things. You could even fear for, you know, death with just somebody lying to you. If something happened to you in the past, allow yourself to identify them. Right? So when I am afraid, I do what? Take notice of yourself. What do you do when you're afraid? Stop breathing is the first one, generally. Withdraw. Withdraw. Run away. Yeah. So start taking notice of the things you do. Yeah? When you're afraid. Sorry? You get cold. Yeah, a lot of people get cold. Cold feet, cold hands. Who gets cold feet? Yeah? Cold feet, you're afraid. It doesn't matter. You might think you're not, but you are. You got cold feet, you're afraid. What about laughing, AJ? What about laughing? Laughing at, at moments when it's probably covering something else. Oh yeah, that's a, definitely a fear. And a lot of men joke, like mm -hmm. constant jokers, constantly running away from mm -hmm. what they're actually afraid of in many cases. Yep. You can use all sorts of things to run away, like things that are totally innocent. Hey? You can even use so-called loving things to run away. Like, like uh, you know, wanting to do things for others because it makes them feel good. Right? What is that loving? Wanting to do things for other uh, things for others because it makes them feel good. No, no, it's not loving, is it? Yeah, if you if you want to do things for others because you just want to give them a gift, that's totally different things. But many times you'll do things for others in the future where you tell them the truth or you give them their time or whatever and they won't feel good. <laughs> and if you're expecting them to feel good, it's not a loving transaction anymore. Any shoulds or have tos or any of those sorts of yep. coming from I should or I have to is not a loving transaction. No, and usually based on fear. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. yep. AJ, yeah. can you, uh, you've mentioned this before, um, when men use joking, uh, jokes a lot, like during the day, for example, at work, um, one of our managers, he, he's constantly joking, and he just says it under his breath, and he can't even half the time hear what he's saying, and you know it's probably the time, but that's what... So how do you feel about that? Uh, like a mistake or something, <laughs> like a mistake. Go deeper. The punchline. Go deeper. Um... How do you feel when you've missed something? You can't, how do you feel when you can't understand? Blacked out. Okay, you're starting to get closer now. You, you've got an emotion within you that he's belittling you because you can't get what he's joking about. Right? So, so there's actually some quite deep emotions in there for you. So you were actually asking about him, weren't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but the truth is that you're asking about you. Right. The reason why you're asking, the reason why that's troubling you, is because it's exposing an emotion inside of you that you're not letting yourself feel. Yeah, I don't get jokes too. <laughs> yeah, and because you feel stupid. Yeah. Okay. There's a feeling inside that it comes from your childhood that you're stupid. Right. 
I recognise it quite well because my mum has exactly the same emotion. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and when somebody jokes and she doesn't get it, she gets into this confusion and then she feels the same feeling you're feeling. So you need to go into that feeling. So use that situation to go into the feeling. Yeah. Rather than trying to get him to change, because remember, you attracted it. Who else wants to come up? I don't know why, because I'm scared stiff to come up. She's scared stiff to come up. You're not quite stiff. <laughs> why are you scared stiff to come up? Well, I have greatest difficulty in connecting with emotions and I know it's me mm -hmm. but I don't know how to deal with it. Right. <coughs> You're just connecting to one there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> so can you feel that the blocking emotion was the one you just described and yeah. you just and the one I felt from you just now was this blocking emotion of I'm not as good as other people. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. I'm just not getting it. I'm just not able to connect with my emotions. There's something wrong inside me. So that's the first emotion you need to connect with. You follow me? Yeah. That's the very I, first emotion. Um, Let's not gloss over it. <laughs> no, I, I sort of feel an emotion and I can actually feel tears coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'm immediately mm -hmm. blocked that. Because they don't cry. Mm -hmm. I'll give you something to cry for. Yeah. So, the, so let yourself feel what the little child felt about those things being said to her. <coughs> so, so, by the way, something that we sort of, uh, we had a meeting in Gympie last week on Sunday, and uh, and it was just a little meeting, but and it, we were dealing with issues of childhood uh, fragmentation. Do, do, do everyone understand what I mean by that? <coughs> no. What happens is when, when you when you have a event happen when you're little, and depending on the terrifying, uh, uh, you know how terrifying that event was, you will actually fragment yourself emotionally up a bit. And what you will do is you'll you'll have different roles being played by different parts of yourself inside of yourself. This happens a lot in uh, violent abuse households, and it happens a lot in like households where the father is a drunkard or something like that, or there's violence. Or, or anger being displayed constantly. And what happens inside of ourselves is we fragment up ourselves and so we've got this little wounded inner child who needs to cry, right? And then we've got another child who protects that child to prevent her from crying, right? And then we've got another child, if it was a sexual abuse issue, we've got another child who protects that child from experiencing the sexual abuse. And then we've got another child who handles all the pleasurable feelings from sexual abuse. Right? So we, and so we start fragmenting up ourselves inside of ourselves, emotionally. And our blocks are very often managed by these fragments. Yep. And so what's happened for yourself is a similar thing to that. There's, a, there's this little girl inside who wants to cry. You can feel her. Yep. But then there's these stronger, this stronger girl who's giving her messages constantly. Right, so the first thing you need to do is allow yourself to start writing down and becoming conscious of all the messages you give the little girl. You follow me? And you'll find that they are a replay of all the messages your parents gave you. So allow yourself to feel those messages. And the, and the statement I'd like to make to the little girl who's doing that is that you are just repeating your mum and dad's damage. Right, so while that's protected you in the past, and while you've been a good girl doing that in the past, you now no longer need to do that. Right? You need to now get into a state where you're no longer protecting your mum and dad anymore, and you're just allowed to feel what you feel. There's some messages that each of you need to tell yourself on this path. I'm allowed to feel what I feel. I'm allowed to see what I see. 
I'm allowed to hear what I hear. I'm allowed to know what I know. Right? Do you understand why you need to say those things to yourself? Because they are all the things you were told you weren't allowed to do when you were young. So, I'm allowed to see what I see. I'm allowed to hear what I hear. I'm allowed to know what I know. I'm allowed to cry when I cry, when I want to cry. I'm allowed to. Right? And the little girl who's protecting her is actually just repeating what mum and dad have done. So allow yourself to talk to, you know, talk, write a letter from yourself if you like. Allow yourself to start writing to yourself as an adult, the protector child. Write to yourself all the reasons why she can't give up her job. And her job is to stop you from crying. Hmm. All right? And that's what it means by starting to access some of these blocks. So start writing down all of the jobs that you've had to protect the little girl from crying. And start noticing yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I previously tried to, to, tried to do something like that, but I get a mental block. Mm -hmm. When I do try. Mental, <coughs> mental blocks are always fear based. Yeah. And if we have mental blocks, that's a high indication that there's been fragmentation. Mm. Right. How do you deal with those things? Uh, you'll probably need some kind of therapist to assist you through the process of it just all they need to do is reassure that child. And you can reassure yourself as well that now I'm a grown up girl, you know. If I'm a woman, I'm a grown-up. <laughs> now I'm a grown-up. Now I'm a grown-up man, <laughs> and uh, and I have the ability now to experience all of these emotions, and I now no longer like while you've done a good job when you're little. Now we want to face all the truth. Now we want to have a good cry about everything that happened. But we want to release it all now. So um, there's a book, uh, John Bradshaw, um, Homecoming. I don't know if you've heard of that book. That book uh, talks about some of the processes you can go through to actually start, you know, addressing the wounded inner child. If there, if you find you get to a place where you almost the tears flow and then there's a shutdown, and then almost the tears flow and shut down again, almost the tears flow, shut down again, then it, the wound there's a there's a wounded inner child who has some very very deep fears about processing emotion. And you need to help her or him come to the point where he can accept or her, she can accept that these emotions need to flow now. Right? And often it's it's difficult sometimes to do it for yourself, like so because you know you feel like you're going insane talking to yourself. And so sometimes it's good with therapy just to lay down on the table, close your eyes, imagine yourself as that child, and then uh, then the therapist can talk to that child specifically, and that child can basically say whatever it wants now. But, at some point, that child's going to need to have education as to what the truth is now. We actually did it, uh, Helga was my volunteer last weekend. And You're still cold. You're still cold, yeah. Yes. yeah. And we talked to, yeah, I can feel that real withdrawal at the moment this week, eh? Hey? Mm. And, yeah, the, uh, we just laid her down and she went into that state and, and, uh, and she started reflecting the little, the protector child started reflecting why she couldn't let little Helga cry. And she started saying all these things about, and she didn't even realise how old Helga, Helga was. No. She didn't realise you were married. And how long have you been married? Um, 28 years. 28 years. And the little child didn't realise that Helga's married. And that's common, where there's such a fragment. And it's caused by violent abuse generally, or sexual abuse, mm. all those kind of things. So there's a few things to do there, to try and see how you go doing, doing those and then we can talk about the deeper things underneath that. But firstly we want to access those blocks. Yep. Thank you. What was your name? Margaret. Margaret, that's fine. Thank you. You'll get there. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret.
And most people have some very, very strong blockages towards feeling their own emotion. Right? But most people can commiserate see you most people can commiserate with other people's emotions quite readily. So if you're having an issue where you can actually watch a movie and cry, but can't cry for yourself, yes. it's an issue to do with you know, obviously an issue to do with how it's again an issue of self worth. Of, of not being able to feel my own emotions but feel somebody else's. So there's some messages, there's some blocks in there preventing yourself from feeling your own emotions, which are related to how you view yourself. Can't you use a movie as a tool to access them? You can, because all of, if you're crying about a movie, then it's because there is deeper emotions inside of yourself, certainly. The, but, but as soon as you switch into your self mode, if you stop crying, then obviously you know that there's some blocks that are preventing you from accessing that. So, if, like, I've found in the last sort of three or four years, I mean, I, I only used to cry at things, you know, but now I'm crying at just stupid things. And I'm, this Olympics has driven me mad. <laughs> 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 I'm crying. 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 I'
the law of attraction was at work in this conversation for both myself and Millie. So, so uh, Millie was feeling a bit blocked, uh, and and lo and behold, I was ch outside chopping some wood, right? And I'm thinking of Millie, right? And about I don't know, maybe five minutes later, Millie rings. Yeah. She phones me. So, so I go and, and we sit down and we have a conversation. And one of the things that comes up in this conversation is about her new uh, stray male uh, cat. I live in the bush and this cat come out of the bush. It's a tom cat, real scruffy looking. And it's just, um, I met a new partner at the time and I was not home very much. <laughs> and it, uh, my other cat was meowing a lot probably, and that's what attracted it, and it moved into the house while I was away. Um, so it took over so your house? took over the house. <laughs> and uh, then when I did come back, in, well, I was wondering why the food was going so quickly. <laughs> but anyway, that's it, just the rest of the story. And so coming back home to spend more time at home, the cat would get on my lap, it still does it <laughs> sometimes. And it would knead its feet mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And then it would gaze lovingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 and then um, go. <laughs> This, this male cat, and it was a male cat, was responding to Millie's unresolved emotion. Right? And, and it has to do with the disgust. Disgust about sexual matters. In particular, men's... men's uh, Disgusting. <laughs> I don't have disgusting things. So. From what I, my experience, Men's child, body fluids. my unresolved emotions and childhood <clears throat> stuff or whatever mm. that I haven't resolved yet. Mm. So we, we then began talking about how she felt about like men, men in particular and there was a lot regarding sexuality and sex itself. And so that brought us into a whole different uh, conversation about, you know, some childhood issues that have obviously occurred that Millie could barely remember. Well, I, I, have, I get, as you say, like I see, when I go through some emotions, I might feel like there's some sort of memory there that I'm sort of remembering but not there's something that I'm feeling, <coughs> but I don't know what it is. And sometimes I might get a slight vision. Um, uh, yeah, um, and then there'll be things like uh, a man at work who I, who would project at me sexually. And um, so what came into my mind as I was feeling some emotions was he reminded me of my uncle John, uh, who wasn't an uncle, but that's what you call a friend of the family. But anyway, um, and I didn't like him, so I all I can do is trust myself that it's something to do with him. Um, and so what's happened here is a lot of fragmentation, of course, because when there's issues of sexual abuse in a child, obviously there's fragmentation. Um, but the law of attraction is demonstrating to Millie that it's still unresolved emotionally. Does that make sense? Now, she has a layer of fear on top of that. Right? The layer of fear on top of that is keeping the memories from becoming a part of her consciousness from an emotional perspective. But she knows now that it's got to be true because the law of attraction keeps bringing yeah, it. Yeah, it keeps coming back at right, me. Right, at, right at space. Stupid things like cats. <laughs> yeah. So even a cat, a cat and a dog and all those kind of, they all reflect your emotions when they're with you. 
right? So if you feel like you're being bossed around by your cat, then you are, because your cat feels like it can get away with it, and it does, because of the emotion that you have within yourself, of feeling like you're being bossed around and you're not releasing that. You follow me? So it's all a, res a response to your emotions, even animals around you, a response. Yeah. So we then discussed, when we were discussing that, I had emotions come up for me because I have some memories from first century experience about abuse uh, to work through as well, about sexual abuse to work through. And so I had feelings of disgust uh, come up towards women, come up with myself, which I had to work through as well. So it's interesting how the law of attraction just, you know, I was thinking about Millie. Millie's been thinking about me for a couple of days. Uh, she just rings me. We start talking about this stuff. It all just comes up naturally, and, but triggers emotions for both of us. Thank you. See, it's, it's so important to love it all, isn't it? Like, isn't it so fascinating? Just how it all happens. Like, it's all just, it's all just there, ready for you to experience. And your fear is your friend leading you to this place that's home, you know? And if, if you're courageous enough to go there, and you can trust what's going on inside of yourself enough to just feel the emotion, you'll get there very, very rapidly. You will. So try to not be so afraid, try to not live in the fear. And you understand the difference between living in the fear and actually feeling it and working your way through it. <coughs> living in it means that you will do everything in your power to get away from it. You will modify your life because of fear. That that's not the answer. Because the law of attraction is bringing you these things to confront your fears to lead you to truth. So if you can start to love your fear, embrace your fear, give it a... <laughs> if you can do that, then everything will come to you naturally. Everything will just flow to you naturally. If you choose to run from your fears, your life will become more and more difficult. It's part of the Lord Trash. Would this current experience of mine that I'm constantly living in ice cold hands and feet, it's going on for a couple of weeks, would that mean that I'm now going to be living in the fear and not running from it? You're, you're now, yeah, experiencing the I'm fear experiencing you felt when you were little. Every day and every night, and yeah. just getting older, and yeah. every word you are saying just brings up the fear in me, and I keep breathing. Breathing releases. Yes. So keep breathing. Whatever you do, keep breathing. When you're in spirits of terror, keep breathing. Yes. My terror experience lasted nearly three months. Uh, and it was, it was, uh, it started off nearly four hours a day, two hours in the morning and two hours at night, where I would actually have these really, the, I'd get into a body cramp, whole body. And so I'd be on the floor with my legs all bent behind my head and my bum and, and my face would be contorted and I was by myself so nobody could help me generally and so I just went through these uh, experiences which I had to breathe my way through they lasted usually a couple of hours they were intense pain all the way through as well and I just allowed myself to experience them just allow myself and it finished up three months later it was five minutes so you know you can feel it slowly leaving you and that was the extent Phones off, please. That was the extent of my terror, and I had to experience that terror. Maybe just the beginning. This has been going on for a couple of weeks. Yep. So just let it keep going naturally. Just let it keep going naturally. Keep breathing. Keep going naturally. A practical experience I just had in the last week was I've had a lemon of a car, which I've been meaning to just get rid of and let go, and but I just kept hopping in it every day. And while I've got this other car sitting there, which is my desire that I want to have driving around, there's a couple of things to do to it. So I got in the car and I drove down the highway and I felt it was about ready to break down, so I thought I'd better do a URI so I can get back off the highway. And um, it, I did a URI, but I broke down right dead smack in the centre. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Vertically right across the highway. So 
Mm -hmm. I've said to my daughter, quick, get out of the car, you know, because it's dangerous. And um, oh, I stood in front of the car then going like this with the other hand on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> just to say stop all the time. She's sitting there probably thinking, oh my God. Well, I'm so what was your law attraction here? To, well, some aspects was, was there like a kick up the bum to get rid of it. Uh, God doesn't give us kicks up the mountain. Because I wasn't listening to myself about what I need to be doing. Well, you already knew to get rid of the car anyway, but and you didn't. So obviously you needed to trigger something at the soul level. So what was it? I'm not sure. It's like that's what I'm not what sure. What did you feel in the situation? I was, yeah, I was, yeah. What did you feel? Um, what did you I feel? might die. Okay. Yeah, it's like, uh, if I'm going to die, I don't want to see it. So you've got some deep fear of death to work your way through? Um, maybe, yeah. Not maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Law of attraction is telling you. And that makes a lot of, sorry to bite in, that makes a lot of sense because her daughter has a big fear of death. Mm. Yeah, and I've always told And by the way, your, cho your children reflect perfectly yeah. what you're afraid of. Yeah. Like, I have a whole discussion about children. That children are just awesome because... They're not their emotions they're experiencing, they're yours. They're your emotions. Right? So if she's got a fear of death, that's you. She's reflecting back at you, your emotion that you're denying within yourself. And that event was there to expose it. Mm. Yeah, just the whole covering my eyes at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So you let yourself go into it. It's a hard feeling to experience, the fear of death. But it's something that needs... Something happened in your childhood where where you were either... Well, three months maybe. Something happened in your childhood where you might have died and been revived or some, yeah. some traumatic event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of times people who have had like near drowning or a near, yeah. you know, near accident where it's almost caused their death have the strong, those strong mm -hmm. emotions. But you know, in Karen's bit of history, can I ask, her mother almost died hence having to have... Yep. Is that the thing that you say we absorb our parents? Yes, yeah, the child would have absorbed, so Karen would have absorbed that, yeah. and then on top of that, that would have then created its own law of attraction. Yeah. So yeah. then you would have had events in your life occurred where you nearly died. Yeah, one time, yeah, it was seven, no, we catatonically just stiff as a board and couldn't breathe. Yeah, but there was one before, there was obviously after you were born, shortly after you were born, some events occurred too. Yeah. I won't say what they were because you you'll be able to feel through them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, now everyone's getting a bit tired, as am I. So uh, I think I've covered most of the things in there. But uh, I just want to say one thing, though, in closing. One thing that will help you to embrace fear is to picture your life without it. So let yourself sit down and meditate. Let yourself sit down and meditate and just feel and picture your life, what your life will be like when you no longer have any fear. Imagine that life. The only way to get that life is for you to embrace all of your fears. Uh, and then to experience the underlying emotions that cause your fears. When you get downheartened about your emotional processing, go back to that space and let yourself picture your life in that space. In that space where there is no longer any fear, where love has thrown aside all fear inside of you and there is no longer anything in your life that you're ever afraid of, that you can be truly yourself without any reservation and imagine that place every time you get a bit downheartened about this emotional processing work because that's the place where one day not too far away you're all going to be and it's an awesome place to be <laughs> remember perfect love throws fear aside. He that's been perfected in love never has fear. But the only way for you to get to that place is by embracing it and not running away from it.
AJ, you just said that with certainty. <coughs> you just told us. You just told us that with certainty. It's magic. Thank you. It's more than magic. Isn't it? <laughs> but then I know for certain that, like, the instant one of you gets into that state, so of the 80 or 90 people here, the instant one of you gets into that state of being without fear, the rest of you are going to find it so attractive <laughs> that you won't be able to help yourself. Yeah. And so all it needs is one person in the end to get into that state before we all finish up having a desire to be in that state. <laughs> you want me to hurry up? Did you say? Yes. <laughs> Another projection. <laughs> it's been lovely uh, having your company again today. And, uh, and I look forward to having it tomorrow. Tomorrow the discussion is about divine truth and the qualities of divine truth. In other words, how you can recognise when something's God's truth and not your own. Right? So we'll talk about that subject a lot tomorrow. And uh, we'll come up with a lot of practical examples tomorrow about different situations where you can see.